The coronavirus outbreak is now a global pandemic, but what exactly does that mean? And more importantly, what does it mean for you? Let's break it down. The World Health Organization has officially declared that COVID-19, the disease caused by the new coronavirus, is a pandemic. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock and we're deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Okay, what does the word pandemic actually mean? Well, let's start with the basics. A disease is endemic if it's common to a certain area. So according to the CDC, the amount of a particular disease that's usually present in a community, that's referred to as the endemic level. When that level spikes up, you get an epidemic, an outbreak across a region, a country, or maybe even multiple countries. The Ebola outbreak in West Africa in 2013, that was an epidemic. But a pandemic, that's when an epidemic goes global. It's a whole new disease that we don't really have immunity to. It's crossing borders and continents. It's spreading quickly from person to person and infecting a large number of people. And in many cases, it has a high death toll. So how did this turn into a global pandemic? Well, here's the basic timeline. The coronavirus first appeared in China in December 2019. By February, we had a name for the virus, SARS-CoV-2, and a name for the disease it caused, COVID-19. By March, there were cases of COVID-19 in every continent except Antarctica. We also started to see community spread. That's when the disease spreads to people who haven't been to an outbreak zone. The incubation period for COVID-19 can be as long as 14 days. That means it can take up to two weeks for people to show serious symptoms, meaning they can spread the virus without even knowing it. So from one hotspot in China, we saw outbreaks popping up all across the world. South Korea, Japan, Iran. In the United States, there were more than 100 cases in Washington state alone. And Italy, the place with the highest death toll outside China, the government announced a travel lockdown across the entire country. That's 60 million people effectively in quarantine. But even as the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed 100,000 and the death toll passed 4,000, the World Health Organization still didn't declare a pandemic. Does this virus have pandemic potential? Absolutely, it has. Are we there yet? From our assessment, not yet. But with the death toll climbing and entire countries on lockdown, that situation finally changed. We have never been before seen a pandemic sparked by a coronavirus. This is the first pandemic caused by a coronavirus. Pandemic is not a word to use lightly or carelessly. It's a word that if misused can cause unreasonable fear. So now that we're in a global pandemic, it's time to panic, right? Well, no, but there are some important things to bear in mind. The first is that as person-to-person -person transmission increases and more people get tested, you're probably going to see a jump in the number of cases. Remember, there were issues getting testing kits out in the early stages, so some cases were going undiagnosed. But a rise in confirmed cases also doesn't necessarily mean catastrophic death toll. Many people weren't diagnosed because they weren't on death's door. Remember, the CDC and the World Health Organization have told us time and again that many people won't get a severe illness from the coronavirus. For some, it'll just be a really bad cold. But that doesn't mean you should get all cavalier and ignore medical advice. You might not get sick, but just like flu season, you might pass the virus on to someone who could get really sick. People with underlying conditions, the elderly. By being smarter with public health, we can protect those people. How? Wash your hands. Hand sanitizer is great, but thanks to our herd mentality, we've kind of gone a little hard on stockpiling and it's sold out pretty much everywhere. But 
Washing your hands is still one of the best things you can do. 20 seconds, sing a song, talk to your co-workers even. Just make sure it's 20 seconds and you're good. Also, try to minimise how much stuff you touch. Hit the elevator button with your elbow, go for a full Vulcan salute over a handshake and just try not to touch your face. Finally, if you're sick, stay at home. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still scary. We've seen big falls on the stock market, people are being asked to self-isolate and work from home, major events are getting cancelled. But we're still pretty well placed to deal with this, especially compared to the last big pandemic we faced 100 years ago, Spanish flu. Hospitals are better, we have technology that lets us work from home, we have grocery delivery services. So while we don't know what the next few weeks and months will look like, just remember, Keep calm and wash your hands. All right, what about you guys? Are you staying at home and self-isolating? And what's your favourite 20-second song to wash your hands to? I'm going for the chorus of Mr Brightside, but it's getting old kind of quickly. All right, don't forget to check out the other videos CNET has going on here and like and subscribe if you want more news.